Hello, my friends. I just stepped in a whole bunch of full water. I didn't notice it was there. So as you can see, we're outside. We're gonna work on another project here. Matt is gonna be helping me, so he's gonna be in this video too. We have this space here now underneath the arborvitae that we decided to leave when we took down the rest of the row. So we were trying to think through all of our options and we had quite a few. We were thinking just more growing space. We were thinking a place for the kids to play. We were thinking more animals. And then we were also thinking like a patio area somewhere to eat outside. Honestly, when we were discussing more animals, like we could totally put goats back here and I could have a dairy source. But um, right now with just how much I have on my plate, that's just not realistic for me. I don't know that I could handle taking on another big thing like that, something that I would have to be milking once or twice a day and then figuring out what to do with the kids, the goat kids, um, you know, after that whole process. It was just, it's too much for me right now, but we always have the option to add that later on if we decide to. So we have this big strip of grass here right now for the kids to play in. So we decided we're gonna make this into a patio space. So we've cleared pretty much everything out. We leveled it the best we could. And right now there's just, it's roofing rubber that the previous owners had used on like a landscaping project that we've just repurposed here. Um, so right now Matt is going and he's getting some railroad ties from his work, which is nearby. And we're going to be putting those around the perimeter of it. We're going to do like a 10 by 20 area. Yes. Hello, Patty. She's very vocal today. So Matt and I discussed our options when it came to like the materials for making this patio space back here. And realistically, it just kind of came down to budget and what was available to us locally. Um, originally I wanted to go with pavers um, and just make it like really clean super nice I wanted to do it in like a diamond pattern with two different colors um, and just finish it off really nice um, we did a whole bunch of searching around locally and the big box stores always came in the cheapest however when we looked at all of the reviews for what was available through those big box stores it seemed like you know, you get what you pay for. Um, and most of the time, you know, they're just much thinner, not as well made, and they don't last as long. A lot of people had issues with them cracking. So we went to some other local, uh, like, paver landscaping type places. And um, the quotes there for us to do the work ourselves. So this is like a 10 by 20 space for the pavers, the sand, the edging and there was something else in there. Um, it was gonna be like 1500 to $2,000. And for this little space back here, we just didn't think that was wise putting that much money into this space for what we're gonna be using it for and where else we could put that money for some projects in the house that I want to do. I wanna get new countertops. So we're just making do out here with the budget that we have. Um, so Matt, where he works is where we're gonna be getting the material from. So that helps us out budget wise as well. And it's very close. Otherwise we'd have to deal with a very large delivery fee so we can make trips back and forth very easily. So we're just gonna do gravel and we're gonna do um, railroad ties around the perimeter of it to keep that gravel inside. I know we're going to have to train this little guy here, Mr. Grant, to keep it in and not throw it out in the grass. But that's just what we think is going to work best for us now. We didn't love that idea because of the stability of the chairs and stuff. But we think with small enough gravel, and I also purchased a rug, an outdoor rug to go here, we think it should be okay. For how much we're using it, it'll work just fine. Um, and we'll be able to use this space for some dinners and lunches and breakfast and whatever we want. Right, buddy? Right? You're yeah. ignoring me, yeah. Yeah. I'm also trying to convince Matt to build, like set some posts here in the ground on each side, build a frame and put in like one of those round, what do you call those, like web type swings for the kids here and have that be next to the seating area. I don't know. I've got lots of ideas and Matt says he's having a hard time keeping up. <laughs> so I'm trying to, sorry, I'm still sick if I start to cough. Um, I'm trying to reel in all of my ideas um, to not overwhelm my husband too greatly. 
So while I'm waiting for Matt to get back over here with some railroad ties, we have to lay those out first, I wanted to check the oats, the milky oat tops. So let me grab one and we'll see if they're ready. Which one do I want? Let's do this one. Let's see. So the time to harvest them is when they, did you see that pop out of there? What was it in focus? There we go. When there's this milky white substance, I hope the camera's picking it up. It's hard to see here in the sunlight, but um, yeah, I'd say they're ready. I think there's like a three to four day window when they start to go to that like milky substance to harvest them. Um, so I'm gonna get to work here while I'm waiting for him. I'm gonna grab these and then uh, we'll tincture them up. Of course, as soon as I start to harvest these, I hear Matt coming back over. These, this is a Vena Sativa. It is a Nervine, so think nervous system. It's a nervous system regulator. Um, also just a super nourishing. Lots of good vitamins, minerals in these things. I can definitely use some more of that. I think most of the population can use some more of that. And I have these in like a four by four little plot here. And there's quite a few. I'll make a lot of tincture. And they very easily just pop right off the top. Okay, so Hubby's back. We have railroad ties. What are these, eight by eights? Approximately eight. Eight-ish. Eight. I wanted to actually use these in the garden, but what do they have on them? Creosote. Creosote, which it's is, in the old days it was yeah, creosote. it's definitely not organic, so we're not doing that. We didn't do that. So these are super heavy. So now the job is to just get them out onto the ground and then roll them into place. Yeah, it's gonna be super fun. <laughs> It was a big piece of wood, buddy. Where do we have to roll it? To my end. To the right? Yeah, roll to your right. One, sorry. Okay, dirty mess. But we got them all in back here. I said to Matt, I know somebody's gonna be mothering me in the comments. I'm giving you full permission to mother me because I know I was not in the correct attire nor footwear for this project. Um, I was very careful. Matt did most of like the heavy lifting stuff. I did help him a little bit. We ended up having to cut a few of them obviously. Uh, we were thinking about keeping them, just doing like increments of eight, but it pushed it out really far here into the yard and we like being able to get the truck through the back of the property here. So we have the perimeter laid. Um, Matt is either going to get something he said, they're like these silver things to like attach them to each other so they're not moving around or else he's going to put some rebar in. I'm not sure which one he is going to decide to do. Um, so we need to do that, but he just went over and he's picking up some stone. Um, bug. So as soon as he gets back, sets them however he's going to, I'm gonna get to filling it. So this is definitely not the route to go if you are a perfectionist because these are very rough cut and they're not like super straight. They're different like thicknesses. Um, we just tried to keep it as symmetrical as possible. So we did two five foot pieces in the center along each side and then eight footers on the outside here on the long sides and then we did a two foot section in the center. So it, it is what it is. It's perfectly fine. It's going to hold in the gravel. I don't mind the look of it, but yeah, not for somebody who is OCD or like super perfectionist. Look at these ginormous 
dahlia heads that are getting eaten by something. I have found so many Japanese beetles already. It's just that time of year. I'm realizing I like being uh, a May and a June gardener. As soon as July starts approaching, it's just like all the bugs come out and it just becomes chaos. <laughs> um, but I mean, I like it all. I'll take it, but I could really do without the pest pressure. The Japanese beetles are just relentless. Um, so it's gonna be coming out every morning, either in the morning or in the evening when they're kind of in their sleepy stage and picking them off, throw them in some soapy water. But anyways, um, I had a squirrel moment. Squirrel! And I found these and I thought I wanted to show you. Um, so I'm waiting for Matt to bring that stuff back. We're gonna like continue on. <laughs> I don't know what my children are doing. We're gonna continue on with this project throughout the week. I have some things on order that aren't gonna be here till midweek. Um, we have a table and chair set to put together. Um, I ordered some lights. I ordered some, <laughs> a rug. Um, so yeah, we'll be working throughout the week. And then once it's all done, I'm gonna make a nice dinner so we can have a meal out here. So it is another day. Uh, we ended up taking the kids to our local farmer's market. So we quick wrapped up what we were doing and we headed out and then started harvesting the rest of this pretty late. So next morning, I'm gonna get this taken care of now, these milky oat tops. Um, you want to tincture them as soon as possible to maintain all of like the benefits of like that milky substance. Um, so we're gonna do this by weight with fresh herbs. I'm doing a one to two ratio. So one part herbs to two parts alcohol. I am using 100 proof vodka, so 50% alcohol. You want to use at least that. I think Everclear, I forget how what the percentage is of that, but you want a really high percentage of alcohol here because of the moisture content in fresh herbs otherwise we could have spoilage and we don't want that so i am going to how do i want to do this let's just put this on here this is going to make quite a bit i might have to find some more containers so let's see here no matter what let me i need a funnel i grabbed the funnel but i just remembered i wanted to kind of muddle these up a little bit and break them open. I asked Nikki, she's always in the comments, she's amazing, she does a whole lot of herbal stuff and she makes the milky oat top tincture. I asked her if she like breaks them apart at all to expose the milky substance and she said she does and um, she said she doesn't really know if it's important to do that or not but instinctively, like I want to do that too. So we're gonna do that. I was trying with potato masher just wasn't really doing anything. You have to like apply a lot of force. So it might be overkill. I don't think it's gonna hurt anything, but I'm gonna run them through the blender, just a couple pulses, just to break them open a little bit. And then we'll measure them out and apply the alcohol. All right, so I have 10 ounces of these tops in here. So that means I need 20 ounces of vodka. Let me zero that out again. No matter what, we need to make sure that these are completely covered. There should not be any organic material here above the level of the alcohol. So if that means we need to add more alcohol, then we will. Um, I'll just have to make note of how much and then adjust dosage. Wowzers, we're gonna need a whole lot of alcohol. Okay, that's a one to four ratio. So I'm just going to have to um, up the dosage by two um, because I need them all covered. That just happens sometimes when you have like these loose, fresh herbs, their volume is more. Um, so they need to be 
we need to be covered. So that's totally fine. I'm just gonna mark that on the lid here. I did a one to four ratio um, so that they were covered and I'll have to up the dosage. But that's all that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna set the lid on here. I'm gonna put it in a cool dark location for about three to four weeks, strain it off, and then I have my milky oat top tincture ready. Here's what we're working with now. We got all the stone in there. We did what, three scoops, right? Yeah. Three scoops. Three ton, a little more. What do you say, three ton? Three ton, a little, a little more. A little more than that. And then, what are these things called? The silver things that you attached? Uh, I don't know what the technical name is. They're just meant for buying uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, they're just, just a silver plate to lash the wood together. Just try and keep them from separating. So now, we've got another project we're working on. Grant Sam, do you like all the stones? Yeah. Are you playing with it? Yeah. Say it's like a toddler's dream, a digging dream. <laughs> okay, so it's another day, working on another project for this new patio area. I wanted to put up some string lights. I found these, they're kind of like Edison bulb. They're just plastic. Um, I picked up a set that's probably too big. We're gonna see if it works. I may have to return them, but for the sake of this video, we're gonna try it out. So I need to make some, we're gonna put some poles in planters, some older planters that I have. We're gonna set them in with some quick set concrete. Um, and then we'll put some like eye hooks in them to hang these from. I needed two for the outer edge here. And then we're gonna just attach them to the trees in the back. So that's what we're working on right now. Those planter post thingamajigs. So we have these pots here that I used before. We're just gonna try and repurpose them. We had started with a four by four, but it looked absolutely obnoxious. We went back and we got, you said this is just PVC pipe? It's just PVC conduit. PVC conduit. And it's a 10 foot pole. We're gonna have to, chop a little bit off the top there, but we're just wanting to get them set in the concrete tonight. So the directions on this thing literally says to fill it up and then to wet it until it looks saturated, right? And it just sets super fast. So that's what we're doing. Oh. All right, so I should be looking at these top two, right? Yep. All right, so it's good this way, and I think it's good that way. All right, stand back, baby. I don't want you to get this on you. And it should just absorb it? Yep, that's my understanding. Okay. I grabbed these plants on clearance from the greenhouse. We left about five inches at the top of the planters there. Not a whole lot of space, but I think enough for some annuals for the remainder of the season. So we'll see how they do. I wanted to grab a few things that were aromatic that would help deter bugs. I really wanted to grab one or two citronella plants, but the greenhouse was all out of them. In fact, the greenhouse was just about empty, which was kind of depressing. <laughs> It's a little crazy how fast this year is going by. I got all of my lights hung. I did it all by myself. I was pretty proud of myself and I thought they turned out pretty good.
A big thank you to Yida Home for providing us with this beautiful outdoor patio dining set. Yida Home has many options for your outdoor living needs. We've been loving our garden seating as well as this new dining set. Both beautiful, well-made, and seriously comfortable. They have excellent reviews online. You can find lots of quality, beautiful pieces at the link in the description below. And use code KELSEY for 15% off your order. Now that all the hard work is behind us, we can enjoy what we have accomplished. So let's make a nice dinner, shall we? We're gonna start with some dessert and I've been craving something with lemon. We're gonna make a lemon butter cake today. I thought that would pair lovely with all of the summer berries we've been getting in. We have raspberries and blackberries and blueberries. Thought it would top it off perfectly. So first thing, we're gonna zest some lemons. Gonna combine some cane sugar with our lemon zest. I'm gonna rub it all together. To this, we'll add some melted butter. Whisk well. Now to juice a lemon. Yogurt. It's full fat Greek yogurt. Last for some dry ingredients, some organic flour, baking powder, salt. Eight inch springform pan, greased and lined. Add this mixture to the bottom. Spread this out evenly. I'm gonna set this off to the side and make some lemon filling. For some lemon cream filling that we'll pour over top of our base layer, I have some room temperature cream cheese. We're gonna add some powdered sugar, some cornstarch. Once this is well combined, we add in some more yogurt, two teaspoons of lemon extract. And pour this lemon cream mixture directly on top. into the oven.
We're gonna move on to a side dish for tonight's meal. We're gonna make a salad, a summery salad with a bit of a twist because it's not a typical salad. The base is going to be some quinoa. So I'm gonna get this simmering on the stove top. We're gonna harvest some veggies. I need to go grab some kale and beets, some shallots and some cucumbers. Those will be either main components to the salad. I'm also gonna do some feta cheese, some pecans, and we're gonna make a honey Dijon mustard dressing to top it all off. For the main dish this evening, we're gonna do a chicken dish. I'm gonna do a balsamic strawberry chicken. I wanted to keep everything just light um, and summery. It's really hot today, it's about 90 degrees and we're gonna be eating outside, so I just want everything to be really refreshing. So I've browned my chicken, as you have seen, have them into a little pan to go in the oven then we're gonna make a balsamic sauce for them now. One cup balsamic vinegar. I can't get the drippy top off, so it's gonna be a little bit here. To the balsamic, we're gonna add some brown sugar. Tablespoon Dijon mustard. Some that in there. Some salt. A little bit of pepper. And bring this mixture up to a boil. Our balsamic mixture is now boiling. I have some cornstarch and water here combined. I'm gonna add into this. I'm gonna allow this to simmer until thickened. Add some strawberries to the top of our chicken. And then we're gonna pour our balsamic sauce we made all over the top into the oven. Now the dressing for our salad. We're gonna do three, no, four tablespoons. We'll do four of olive oil. Three tablespoons balsamic. One and a half tablespoons Dijon mustard. Two tablespoons of honey. Sprinkle of salt.
So aside from the table and chairs, we were given those. Everything else in this space cost us around $350, which isn't too bad. I'm really just feeling so grateful for this new space, another space to just enjoy with my family, enjoy my family, enjoy the beauty before us, everything that we've been entrusted with. We have come to love this little quarter acre homestead and all that it has given us. And it has been such a blessing to our family, believe it or not, in the beginning. We wanted to leave this town, leave this property, get out of here, move closer to this city. Thinking about that now makes me cringe. We've been here now for nine years, homesteading for seven. When we first moved in, we tore out all the landscaping. We tore out the garden. We wanted nothing to do with that. But my, how the Lord works and how our views and our wants have changed. Once we started homesteading, all we wanted was to move to a bigger property, have space for animals and just more options to do things, to grow more food, to get away from town. And believe me, we still have those dreams. We have a big vision. But what God has taught us along the way is that by stewarding well, whatever he has placed in front of us, we have found true contentment and true peace with where we're at. Where we are right now in this season of life is just part of the big picture. It's part of his plan. And his plan is always far greater for us than ours could ever be. There's so much beauty to be found in where you are right now in the journey, in the refining process, in all of the growth that happens. All of that to say, I'm just feeling really grateful and I hope it encourages you wherever you are at right now. Don't be afraid to sow some seeds of faith. Steward well what you have and grow right where you are. Many blessings, friend. Until I see you again, take care.